All right, today we're going to talk about uh, an economic concept that can be a little bit tricky sometimes. It's known as comparative advantage, uh, or in other words, why countries are better off if they choose to engage in trade. This choosing to engage in trade is called interdependence. When countries choose to specialize in the goods that they're best at producing, that's called interdependence, relying on one another. Now, there are two basic philosophies regarding interdependence and the gains from trade. The first philosophy comes from Adam Smith, the father of modern economics. Uh, when he wrote about trade, he talked in terms of absolute advantage. The country that has the ability to produce a good at the lowest possible cost in terms of land, labor, and capital should actually focus on producing that good. Now, this would be, for example, if we had both England and France making wine and cheese. If England were worse than France at making both wine and cheese, there's no possible reason France should choose to engage in trade with England. This theory was turned on its head a little bit a generation later by another English economist by the name of David Ricardo. Uh, and he looked at trade and he realized that absolute advantage was not the primary driver of trade, rather it was comparative advantage or the ability to produce goods at the lowest possible opportunity cost. So for example, let's go back to our wine and cheese example, England and France. If France chooses to make both wine and cheese, they're perhaps giving up producing wine, which they have a very, very clear advantage of over England. Now, imagine for a moment we have Jim and a friend named Mike who are dividing work between uh, for a class between themselves. The work consists of outlining the text and writing pages of response. The following chart represents the output they could achieve in one day of work. The one day would be their input. So how much output could they achieve in a single day? So in one day of work, if Jim were to spend all of his time outlining, he could make six outlines. Or if he were to spend all of his time writing pages, he could write 20 pages of response. Mike, by contrast, if he spent all of his time outlining, he could only make two outlines. If he spent all of his time writing pages of response, he could write 10 pages. Now, in terms of absolute advantage, Jim is better at everything. He's better at outlining and writing pages. He could write six outlines in the time Mike can write two. He could write 20 pages in the time Mike can write 10. According to Adam Smith, Jim could never possibly benefit from trading with Mike. But David Ricardo, in the theory of comparative advantage, looks at it a little differently. To solve for comparative advantage, you have to determine the opportunity costs of the action. So in this scenario, if you're making pages, you're not writing outlines. Or if you're writing pages, you're not writing or excuse me, if you're, if you're writing outlines, you're not writing pages. So, to determine the opportunity cost for outlines, we have to figure out how many pages we're giving up for each outline we produce. In this scenario, Jim gives up 20 outlines for every six pages he produces, or 3.33 pages per outline. Mike gives up 10 pages for every two pages he or two outlines he produces, or five pages for every one outline. And I always want to reduce this to one in terms of one product. So in this case, in terms of one outline. What's the cost of pages in terms of one outline? That allows me to compare the compare compare the opportunity costs. So in this scenario, it actually costs Jim less to make pages. He should focus on producing pages. Now, to determine the opportunity cost of pages, we have to look at it again. 
This time we're going to look at, if we're looking for the opportunity cost of pages, how many outlines are we going to give up? So here, Jim gives up six outlines to get 20 pages, while Mike gives up two outlines to get 10 pages. And I, again, reduce it down to one page. Jim gives up 0.3 outlines. Mike gives up 0.2 outlines. Here, Mike has the lower opportunity cost. He's only giving up 0.2 outlines. He should focus on making pages. Costs him less. The implications here are Jim and Mike should engage in trade. Without trade, the best Jim could hope to produce is three outlines and 10 pages splitting his time, while the best Mike could hope to produce is one outline and five pages splitting his time. So if Jim spends half his time making outlines, he makes three. If he spends half his time making pages, he makes 10. If Mike spends half his time making outlines, he makes one. If he spends half his time making pages, he makes five. Now, that is called our consumptions possibility. That's our consumptions possibility without trade. Imagine you come up with an excellent proposition. Because of comparative advantage, because we know Mike can produce pages at a lower cost, he should focus on making just pages. Jim, because he's so much better than Mike, is going to actually make a little bit of both. And you decide to come up with a price of four pages for one outline. This price is known as the terms of trade. Now, to make the terms of trade fair, what you want to do is actually split the opportunity cost. So if we come back and look at it, here was our opportunity cost of pages. Jim gives up 3.33. Mike gives up 5. Fair trade will be somewhere between the two, right? And the price you agree on is going to be four pages for every one outline. Now, we engage in trade. Jim produces four outlines. Mike produces zero. Jim produces seven pages. Mike specializes in making pages, makes ten. They're going to trade one outline. So one of the outlines is going to go to, to Mike. All right, once again. Jim is going to produce four outlines and seven pages. Mike is going to produce zero outlines but ten pages. They're then going to trade one outline for four pages. So one of Jim's outlines is going to go to Mike. His outlines are going to go from three or from four to three. Mike is going to go from zero outlines to one outline. Now, in exchange for that one outline that Mike is going to get, he's going to trade four of his pages to Jim. So his page consumption is going to go from six or from 10 to six. Jim's is going to go from seven to 11. Now this would represent Jim's PPF without trade. If he spent all his time making outlines, he can make six. If he spent all his time making pages, he can make 20. Uh, if he split his time, he can make three and 10. But with trade, Jim was actually able to consume three outlines and 11 pages. So he actually gets one additional page more than he would have if he didn't engage in trade. Now, you would think that this one page comes at the expense of Mike, but it actually... So Mike's PPF with trade, if he spends all his time making outlines, he can make two. If he spends all his time making pages, he can make 10. Now, with trade, however, his outline production drops to one, but his page consumption actually goes up to six. So he also gets one additional page. The benefits of trade come from what in economics we call specialization, doing the things that you tend to do best. And if you think from your own life, you're probably better at some things than other. That 
would be examples of specialization. Those are the things you want to focus on. Now, so there's another way to determine comparative advantage, and that's called the cross-multiply method. If you have an output problem, you're looking to maximize the absolute number of output you can create. If you have an input problem, you're looking to minimize the amount of inputs used. So for example, this chart would represent the number of pounds of avocado Mexico and the United States could make in a given day. In one day, Mexico can make 15 pounds of so soybeans and 60 pounds of avocados. The United States could make 30 pounds of soybeans and 90 pounds of avocados. Now, according to Smith, the United States would have absolute advantage in both the production of soybeans and avocados should it engage in trade. But we're actually not looking for absolute advantage. We're looking for comparative advantage. To establish comparative advantage using the cross-multiply method, we're only looking for who has comparative advantage in the first column. So here it's going to be soybeans. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply across. 30 times 60 is 1,800. 15 times 90 is 1,350. And we're looking to maximize our output. So in this, in this scenario, the United States has comparative advantage in soybean. So you're finding the comparative advantage for whatever's in the first column. Now, one fact about comparative advantage, because it's an inverse ratio, you can actually only have comparative advantage in one product. So if you have comparative advantage in soybeans, Mexico has to have comparative advantage in avocados. You can't have comparative advantage in two products at once. Now, with an input problem, it'll come in terms of the number of workers needed to produce, the number of hours needed to produce, something along those lines. So here we have, let's say, the number of workers needed to produce 100 pounds. In Mexico, it takes 16 workers to make 100 pounds of soybeans and 8 workers to make 100 pounds of avocados. The United States takes eight workers to make 100 pounds of soybeans and six workers to make 100 pounds of avocados. Again, the United States would have absolute advantage in both soybeans and avocados. But to find for comparative advantage, once again, we're going to cross multiply. So it's going to be eight times eight is 64. 16 times six is 96. Now here, it's inputs. And we want to minimize our inputs. We want the inputs to be as small as possible. So in this scenario, the United States, again, has comparative advantage in soybeans because the, the inputs used is the lowest. Now, if the United States has comparative advantage in soybeans, Mexico must have comparative advantage in avocados.